Hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters. <laughs> hey, it's Jazz, and this is Wildlife Matters. It's that time of the year again when people are celebrating Halloween, the spookiest time of them all. And if you're living in the Philippines and you believe in superstitions, then you're probably on the lookout for a swans. But before I begin, I'd like to ask you to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our Facebook page, and follow our social media pages. Wait, yung, yung, ito din, kasi baba to, ito taas. Yan. Ganyan. Yan na yun? Yan na yun. Ang gaya, ang gaya din ako na ito. Gaya? Ah-ah. Ayan, mag-asayta ka ng ganyan. Ha? Mag-asayta ka ng buo? Ha nga. Ha? Mahihirapan ka. Baka bulul-bulul pa. Huwag na. Magiging witch na lang ako. Hey, Barbie. An aswang is what you call many different types of shape-shifting evil spirits in Filipino folklore, often told through myths, stories, movies, and art. Over the past few decades, there have been many reports of aswang sightings, especially in the province. And while this episode is not meant to disregard the stories of other people, it is still a fact that many people often get mistaken in thinking that they've seen an aswang when actually it was just an animal. So here are six animals that have been mistaken as aswangs. Tanggalin ko na kaya to. Number one, the flying fox. The golden crowned flying fox can be found nowhere else other than the Philippines. As a frugivore, they feast on fruits and make lots of noises while eating. That can potentially give people the creeps. They are typically nocturnal, so you'll find them flying around during the night. And while they are not human-sized as people sometimes assume them to be, they are really big and can have a wingspan of about 5 feet. And aside from common misconceptions about bats in general being blood-sucking vampires, these forgivorous species can also be mistaken as manananggal, which is a monster in the form of a woman who splits herself by severing her upper body and flies around with bat-like wings searching for a man who she typically preys on. Number two is the Philippine flying lemur or the Philippine kolugo. The Philippine flying lemur is locally called kaguang, and local folklore say that it's an aswang that feeds on humans and their internal organs, and that it sucks blood and destroys crops. It is also believed to be bad omen. There was a Facebook user who posted pictures of a flying lemur claiming that it was an aswang who ate other creatures in the area. But this could not be farther from the truth because flying lemurs eat fruits, leaves, and flowers, not humans or other animals. These species are endangered and can be found in the Mindanao faunal region. And while they are called flying lemurs, they don't actually fly and they're not really lemurs. Instead of flying, they glide on trees. And instead of being actual lemurs, these guys are not related to them at all. They are actually colugos. There are only two species of colugos in the world and one of them is the Philippine flying lemur or the Philippine colugo. Number three, snakes. Remember when you had that episode about this snake being killed because someone thought that it was a shape-shifting aswang? Well, this happens more often than we think, especially in the provinces where many snakes are being killed just because they're believed to bring bad luck, to be something as a form of witchcraft, or basically shape-shifting evil spirits. This is not true, of course, because snakes are as much of an animal as your pets are. All they want to do is live their lives in peace. Number four, dogs. The term aswang actually originated from the word aso and wang. Aso is the Filipino word for dog. And this is because it's believed that these beasts actually shapeshift into the form of dogs. However, in Bukidnon, there is what we call the tiger dog or aso ng gubat. This dog is a very unique type of wild dog and it doesn't breed with other dogs, but only with its same kind. And that's why it's probably one of the most purebred dogs that we have in our country. These dogs are very skilled hunters and will even hunt down cobras. They can even climb on trees and unlike most dogs have very sharp claws, which they can even shed to produce new ones. According to researcher Tom Asmus, they are very independent and can survive just on jungle vegetation. With an impeccable 
kill instinct, they will hunt on anything they fix their eyes on. Whether it be cats, dogs, goats, or poultry. And the size doesn't matter. For so many years, Filipinos believed that the aso ng gubat was just a myth. But for generations, the lumads from Bukid Don have passed down oral mythology that if you kill one of these dogs, your entire family could be cursed. The fact that such an ancient lore exists means that these dogs have probably been here for a while now. Not just as mere street dogs, but as an ancient indigenous breed of wild dogs. And since people have been believing that they're just myths, I wouldn't be surprised why they keep mistaking it for a sigbin. A sigbin is a mythical creature said to be companion animals of vampires that sucks blood and preys on animals and human beings. They are also believed to have the power to become invisible and come out during the night. It is usually described as dog-like with long legs like a kangaroo. Probably not too far from what the aso ng gubat looks like. Number 5. Cats Not just in the Philippines, but in many places in the world, cats have often been seen as symbols of bad luck, especially black ones. In movies, they're portrayed as pets of witches and evil villains. But again, like I said, this is just a myth. Cats are not evil, and they're not inhabited by evil spirits. And number 6. Dugong. It's no doubt that dugongs and even their cousins, manatees, are often mistaken by sailors and fishermen to be mermaids or what we call in the Philippines, sirena. And are mythical creatures that live under the sea with the upper body of a female and the tail of a fish. According to the myths, they abduct sailors and fishermen and carry them under the sea. With so many rare and endemic species in our country and very few informed individuals, it's easy to get them confused for what they are not. And often, these confusions lead to them getting killed. So many animals and even humans have been killed and murdered just because somebody thought that they were an aswang. So the next time you hear someone say that they've seen an aswang, maybe do some research first and see if there's any animal that looks kind of similar to what that monster might look like. And hopefully, you'll find that there's no reason to panic after all. Because remember, every piece of wildlife matters.